my. And we have, we're going to have four rules. And these are completely strict typographical rules for thinking about, uh, for deriving new things that we can pull from our bag. Um, our first rule is that if we have an I, so suppose we have MI, or we could have anything and then an I, we can tack a U on. So I U. So right away, we know that we can create M I U. Our second rule is suppose we have M and then a string of letters that are I's and U's, since they're in our bag of alphabet, our alphabet here, then you're going to get for free MXX. So just as an example, suppose somehow you had MI, which we do, um, you're going to get MII for free. Third rule. Suppose you have, somewhere along the way, you end up with a cluster of three eyes. They don't have to be at the end. They can be anywhere. Just needs to be three eyes all together. And you can replace all three of those eyes. They're equal to a U. So. And our final rule is that if we have a double pair of U's, we can drop them, and they just go away. So somehow, if we had M U U, we could just have M. Now, you have these rules. You have these letters. You start with one guy. He's going to be our axiom. An axiom is a starting point for reasoning, for applying these rules. And the game is, can you get MU? Starting from MI and using only these th four rules, can you get MU? I will give $20 to the first person who can derive MU. That's in this room. Only applying these four rules and starting directly from MI. Just to give you an idea of where you might be going, where you might be playing, um, just going off of our rules, we already saw that if we had MI, we can get MIU. We also saw that using rule two, using rule one, we can get MII. We saw if we have anything like that, we can repeat it twice. So we can get MIUIU. That's applying rule two again. Um, and so on. Leave this, leave this as a puzzle. Take your time with it. You'll be working on it for a few hours. But first person that's in this room, derive MU from this, it's $20. Yes? What rule only applies to U? Yes, fourth rule only applies to two U's. So yes, if you have two U's, you can remove them. You can subtract them. All right. And once again, I, I do urge everyone to buy the book. Um, these rules are listed explicitly in the chapter. Um, and you might get, gain some insight on how to derive what you want here. So why is this interesting? I mean, it's a, it's, we're just playing with letters and strings and things like that. Well. Although this seems pretty meaningless and kind of dumb, um, does anybody feel like when they're just looking at this game, looking at this rules, that they're just essentially playing around with algebra that they learned you know, in middle school or high school? That really what we're doing here is we've got some statements like 2 plus 2 equals 4. And we all learn that we have a typographical rule um, for when we have an equal sign like that, we can 
add one to both sides and preserve equality. So something we have 2 plus 3 equals 5. So really what mathematics reduces to is, is just playing around with, with uh, systems of this form and applying these rigorous kind of typographical rules. Except here there doesn't seem to be any meaning. It's just meaningless. One of the important questions we're going to address in this class is how do things gain meaning? How do we go from meaningless to meaning? Um, this obviously seems to have meaning, but I want you to ask yourself why. Um, kind of before we proceed, it's necessary, it's my duty to do the boring task of writing down uh, uh, just a few definitions of, of things which, which you can call these. So you have words. So we already saw axiom. That's, that's a definition. You call any of these guys a string. So, so a string is just any ordered sequence of, in this case, mi's and u's. We already met an axiom. An axiom is a starting point. It's your first thing that you can apply the rules to. So, and this actually has a lot to do with mathematical logic, because in math logic, the idea is that we start from really primitive things which seem obvious, like the successor of 0 is 1. Um, and then we work from that concept, and we derive all these truths of number theory and mathematics. Um, here, your axiom is mi. And you're trying to prove the theorem. And that's kind of our next, next guy here. Um, well, you're trying to prove the theorem of mu. So a theorem is basically a string which results at the end of a derivation. And a derivation is like a proof. For those of you who have done geometry, when you're saying, OK, well, this triangle's congruent to this triangle because of side angle side and things like that, those are, you're, you're deriving, you're making rigorous justifications for your leaps in logic. So here, our rigorous justification that MIU was the theorem was that, well, we applied typographical rule number one. That's a rigorous leap in logic. And we got to this theorem. And you can just call these four rules here. These are rules of inference. And logic and a lot of things that you'll play around with, you know, eventually on SATs and things like that, are, you know, if you have if you have the statement that P, P implies a statement Q, so if it's cloudy, then it will rain. You have, you have that this is, is kind of equivalent to, I should use a different arrow here, to not Q implies not P. Um, and these are really nice because they're just typographical rules. When you see something, like when you have, well, I've got M followed by any string of letters, well, then I can double it. That's a rule of 